The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. Hi there everyone, Boyd here with you and welcome to part one of our Talos Attacks figure build series here on the Trekworks channel. We just got this kit in the shop a couple of days ago. This is from Monsters in Motion. It's a 1-6 scale solid resin cast diorama scene featuring the Talos figure and the ship the Argo from the movie Jason and the Argonauts. It's going to be a really fun build. I'm really looking forward to it. I had a uh, quick look at the parts here yesterday and I'm really pleased with the kit so we're going to open up the box here and show you what we got with the kit here today and then we're going to follow that up with a, a little bit of preliminary work getting the figure put together today here in the shop we got to do a little bit of work on him he's a resin figure and that's kind of typical what you get with resin figures we got to do a little bit of sanding on it and a little bit of seam work when we assemble it glue them together with some CA glue as you can see here this is the uh, basic artwork for the kit the figure, as I said, is a 1-6 scale figure, so he stands about 11 inches tall. And here you can see the depiction of the uh, diorama scene below with the uh, Argo, which was the ship they had in the movie. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts name plaque. A little bit of a water scene here and a couple of rocks that serve as a base for the Talos figure to stand on. Depicting the scene in the film when they're trying to escape and he uh, basically reaches down and attacks the ship at this point. As you can see, the figure itself is going to be a lot of fun to work with because he's uh, he's a giant bronze figure that's obviously been outside in the elements for a long time, so he's got a lot of corrosion on him. You can see the kind of green corrosion that you see on you know metal and bronze statues that you might see in the park or at uh, your you know courthouse famous figures out that have been outside for a long time. So uh, this is going to be really fun to simulate that uh, that that weathering that's on this guy. We're going to start off with a basic color which will kind of simulate bronze and then we're going to do a wash on this guy to bring out some of the detail and then we'll follow that up by adding out all this green corrosion on this guy in, in various places. I've taken several screenshots of the film so I can kind of uh, replicate some of that uh, using those for reference so uh, we'll take it from there but let's have a look at the figure itself. We'll start off with the uh, just I'll have to back up here just a little bit so, you, so I can kind of get him in the whole picture here for you. You can see that uh, it's a really nice likeness of the figure from the film. It looks just exactly like him. And at 11 inches tall, he's pretty big. It'll be a nice scale to go along with the other uh, figure kits that we've been building here recently. And uh, we'll start and show you his torso here, his upper half up close. You can see that they've got some kind of pitting cast into this, which is fine because uh, he's supposed to look really corroded. He was as I said, out in the elements, but as far as we see the face, the muscle skeleton uh, or structure, uh, everything on him looks really accurate to the film. The helmet that he has on, the beard, you know, everything, the eyes, it looks, it looks exactly like the figure we saw, so I'm really happy with that. The lower half here, you can see we've got the detail on the feet, which we saw a lot of you, uh, when Jason's kind of men were running around there down on the bottom, you know, they look like ants compared to this guy trying to fight him, so the detail on those looks to be really good. Uh, so we've got a lot to work with here. There's a couple really minor little pits on it here and there, but we can easily fix those with a little bit of filler putty. Now, typical on resin kits, you have to do a little bit of sanding. Uh, we see a little bit of casting lines here running down the sides, which we're going to have to clean up. Uh, nothing major, though. A few little, you know, kind of raised details there that need to be sanded down, but those of you out there who have worked with resin before, you'll know that resin sands down really easily. In fact, it sands down even easier than uh, regular styrene plastic, so we'll be able to get this guy cleaned up pretty quickly. Let's look at the other two major pieces of the figure, which are the arms. You can see here we've got some pretty good detail on there. The finger detail and everything looks to be pretty good. He's holding the uh, butt of the sword here on this hand. Again, we have a little bit of a mold line here running down on this side. 
kind of a little bit up on this side as well, but nothing serious at all. We'll, we'll easily clean that up. Got a little bit more of a raised one here, but again, that's typical on a kit like that. Nothing to be afraid of. We'll get that cleaned up real easily. Let's check these out and see how well they fit on the figure itself. Start off with the left arm here. And uh, just looking at it, it looks to be pretty good. There's just a little minor seam there. And uh, a little bit of sanding, and we'll get that pretty close, and then we'll fill that in with some of our... We're going to use a little bit of our Vallejo putty again that comes in the tube, acrylic putty. And uh, that's what we're going to actually show you working on here in a little bit. Let's try the right arm here. And uh, the gap is a little bit wider on this one. You can see it there. But it's because there's a little bit of excess resin right here. When we sand this down where it's flat, that's going to fit up in there a lot better. But uh, the cleanup on this is not going to be bad at all. It's uh, going to fit together pretty nice. The upper and lower halves seem to fit together pretty well. As you can see here, I can kind of rock them back and forth a little bit there. So there's just a little bit of a high spot in the center, either here or here. So I'll sand that down a little bit, and we'll get him to fit nice and tight. And then we'll take care of that seam there in the middle. So we also have uh, Talos's sword here that he holds in his, uh, his uh, left hand. And there are a few little casting flaws in this, again, but nothing that won't clean up. The line here around the, uh, the, the scribe line, kind of on the detail of the shank of the sword, is a little bit broken up, but we'll just have to rescribe that a little bit, sand off this excess uh, casting material here, get that cleaned up. Then we have the sail for the Argo itself, a little ship, as you can see that. It's only detailed on one side, so you face the flat side away where it can't be seen. You could actually come here with some uh, putty and do a little sculpting on this and, and make it look similar to what, how it does on the front if you want to take the time to do that. Not too hard. A little bit of excess casting on it. We've got to sand this a little bit and clean it up. Nothing major. So we'll wrap this part up here by finally showing you the base itself. And here you can see we have a nice, uh, nicely done uh, scale version of the Argo which it even has the cool little figurehead on here of the goddess. I forgot what, what her name was now, but they had a goddess as a, as a figurehead on the ship that kept giving Jason advice through the entire movie. Sort of a talking figurehead. Pretty cool. But you can see they do have some water effects cast into this. You got the Jason and the Argonauts nameplate, and of course the two rocks that serve as a base for the mounting of the uh, Talos figure. I don't think we're going to have to pin him or anything. I think if I just use some of my JB Weld, I can glue this guy down on here and he'll be pretty solid. But uh, as far as the water effects go here, they've got it kind of detailed, you know, where you can see some wave action. But what we're going to do is I'm going to sand most of this down, and we're going to actually do some realistic-looking water effects on this one. We're going to use either some silicone or some resin or something like that and create that transparent water and uh, make this look, look a little bit more realistic, so that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm researching now kind of the best way to do that. We'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it a little bit farther. We're going to focus on building the figure first this time around. So there's a look at the kit, everybody. I'm really pleased with it. It's a nice kit. If you're interested in one of these, they're available at the Monsters in Motion website, and they're also selling them online on eBay. Um, they are a limited edition. I understand they're only going to do 30 or 35 of these, and then they're gone. So if you want one, you better get one pretty quick, because once they're gone, the kits that, that pop up later on, they're going to be high price. Somebody will come back and... You know, because they're hard to get, they'll raise the prices like crazy on them. So if you want one, you probably better jump on it fairly soon. But um, it's, it's a great kit, uh, you know, really nice scale. Uh, at 11 inches, he'll be, uh, have a lot of detail that we can do on it. We're going to have a lot of fun, like I said, with the painting process on this. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to work and I'm going to get them all glued together. We're not going to show you that part because uh, it's pretty straightforward. I got to do a little bit of sanding on it here and there. I'll get them all cleaned up and glued together, and then what we're going to show you today is we're going to do the, uh, the work filling in all the seams and getting the putty work done and get them in primer. And then in part two when we come back, we're going to start doing the uh, paint detail on the figure itself. So stay tuned for that, everybody. Be right back. All right, back with you again, everyone, and here's Talos after he's been all assembled. I uh, went through and used my putty, went around all the seams and everything. We used this uh, uh, Vallejo acrylic putty here in this little tube. This is nice because it has that little applicator tool. It's a nice fine little tip, so I was able to get up underneath of his armpits in the little recessed areas and work my way all around this. 
and uh, we've got them all in primer and everything now. You can see his, his seams all look really good. Can't tell where he's been put together anymore. We got his waist where we glued them together here. We got his arms where they attached. Uh, now, when I applied my putty and everything, we wound up with a couple of spots after I did my sanding that uh, looked kind of smooth compared to, you know, the rest of the texture that this guy has on him. So what I did to blend that back in is when I sprayed my primer on here, I used some uh, Duplicolor High Build Primer here, which is uh, some really good stuff. And it sprays on kind of thick, so I sprayed it on and just waited about a minute or two until it started to get sort of tacky, and then I just went with my uh, paper towel and just kind of did a stippling effect on it, you know, just kind of tapped on it all around, and it made that texture come right back. Once I got that uh, back to where it needed to be, I just sprayed another light coat of primer over top of it, and we got that nice uh, texture back on his body to match the rest of it where you can't tell where our sanding and our primer has been done. I've gone all around this guy and fixed all the pits that were on him. I fixed all the raised areas that were, you know, kind of standing up too high. There were kind of little chunks on him here and there. There was a there was a big one right here on his back that I got rid of. But it's all put together now. We got his sword attached. So it's time to start having some fun here with painting him. We're going to start off first with uh, this uh, bronze color, sort of a goldish bronze color that I've got mixed up. I just mixed my own color. I'm using my automotive acrylic urethane paints here on this guy. I want him to dry pretty fast. So I'm going to spray this entire thing down with gold first, this color that I've mixed up. We're going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come back with my airbrush and with some black, and I'm going to highlight all the areas on his muscle structure here and, you know, the details around his eyes, around his face, all around these little areas of, uh, you know, detail. Uh, and then we're going to come back and go back to our original base coat color and then just do a light airbrush over top of that, and that will bring out all of his... Uh, shading and everything that we want to have done on this. So let's go ahead and start off with our color here. I've got my bronze. I'm going to start off on the top and just work my way down here, guys. Looks like it's laying down on there pretty good. All right, we've got our base color on him now. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry just for a minute or two. Let me um, zoom in on him here just a little bit for you. You can see he looks a lot more like Talos already. He looks pretty darn cool. Let's get you up close on this top half here. You can see all that texture just jumped right out. He's got a nice shimmer on him. Of course, he's way too shiny for what we want right now. He looks a lot more worn out than that. But this is uh, what we're going for, basically. He's, uh, if you look at him in the film, he's got a few spots, you know, kind of peeking through here and there that look uh, pretty shiny on some of the highlights here and there. But, you know, he's kind of dulled down. But once we start putting on all of our shading here, our black... And then we're going to start uh, coming back and hand painting on all the uh, corrosion, you know, the kind of greenish, uh, light green kind of corrosion that goes on this guy. That's going to start changing things up quite a bit. And then when we finish this all up, we're going to seal it up with some dull coat. But uh, the detail on this guy is fantastic, and it really, really pops out now that we got the color on him. I'm using this automotive solvent-based paint, so it's going to dry pretty fast, uh, probably about 15 minutes or so, and he'll be ready to go, and I'll put a second coat on him. So we'll come back, and when we come back, I'm going to have some black mixed up, and we're going to come back and do all of our highlighting on that, and then we're going to finish up by doing another top coat with this color, and then we'll be ready to move on. We'll start doing some of the corrosion painting. So we'll see you with that in just a couple seconds, everyone. All right, moving on now. It's time to add a little bit of black shading on our Talos figure here. He's been drying here for about 15 minutes. So I've put a little bit of black in my airbrush now. I've got my... Uh, air pressure turned down to about 25 psi so I'm just gonna go around and highlight some of these little details on him here like I talked about on the muscle tone a little bit around his face down on his legs down on his feet 
and uh, we'll bring out some detail on this. So I'm just going to real careful now, get real close, and just start putting this on. Just uh, highlighting here and there. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, because we're going to come back and go over this. He stands up pretty good, but you got to be careful with him here. He's a little bit wobbly. He sits really good on the base. Anywhere where there's like a nice raised detail, I'm just hitting a little line over it is all I'm doing here. Back again, everyone, and I've uh, put my bronze color back in my airbrush now, and we're going to just go ahead and highlight back over this and get this blended back in. I'm still down at low pressure. I'm down at about 20 PSI. So all I'm going to do is I want to just kind of highlight over the top of the areas where we did the black just to uh, blend this back in and not leave our black too overpowering. We just want to have it in those little recessed areas. where we did that shading. I'm staying pretty far away and just kind of fogging it on over the top of it. Now, I was thinking about maybe doing a wash instead on this, but the reason I decided not to is that uh, the black air or the uh, the severe pitting that this guy has on? I'm looking at the at the pictures here of the miniature again. He doesn't have a lot of real dark colors and all that pitting. He's kind of, you know, he's he's kind of um, overall uh, this one color with just the staining going on besides that. So the black would have gotten in all those tiny little recesses and made him look kind of speckled. So I don't I didn't think that that was going to work very good, but I think this is going to work just great. I'll get you up close to his face now, and you can see that we've got the highlights of his beard there now showing up better with the black that we added. The eyes look a little bit darker because the, the black's still in the recessed areas, and you can see the, the shading on his muscle tone here on the abdomen and on his pecs and everything on his back. So that worked out just like we wanted it to. It's, uh, it's subtle. It's not, you know, it's not overdone. I need to get in this little area right here a little bit. I can see I missed... Overall, he looks really good. He's getting really close to looking just like he should here. More on the arms there, I guess, up underneath this. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now, like I mentioned, we've got that little area just underneath of his neck here and a little bit on his arms and kind of down on his legs here just a little bit. It's not overly done, but there's a little bit of purple going on there, a real dark purple. So I'm going to mix up some of that, and we'll just kind of dust a little bit of that on there, and then we'll be ready to go on to our corrosion painting, which we're going to be doing that with a brush. So we'll be right back with that. Okay, everyone, I've mixed up my purple color, and I've got my air pressure about 25 PSI still. And uh, just, again, using our, our uh, screenshot here as a reference, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of this tone onto them. Uh, it looks like a lot of it's concentrated right up underneath of his neck right up here, so I'm going to start off in that area.
it's just kind of blended in a little bit. It's not like overly done. And there's a little bit up on the top of his helmet here. And then coming on down to his arms. A little bit in this area right in here. It's almost like kind of a staining, you know, like it, and it, and it really looks nice with that, uh, that green mixed in with it. Okay, go around and do a little bit on the back as well. Okay, not a lot guys, just kind of subtle. And uh, let's get you a look at this a little bit closer here. And you can see that that gives it a really unique look there too. Uh, when we start doing all of our green and adding that into that, that's gonna blend in really well. So time for me to mix up my green. I'm gonna spend a few minutes off camera here. Now I'm gonna be using my craft acrylic paints for this, uh, water-based, and uh, that way if we make any mistakes with our uh, our corrosion painting here, we can um, wipe it back off, you know, we can, we can go back and start over, so, but I'm really happy with how everything's going so far. We're going to be doing that again all with a brush here, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Be right back with that, everyone, getting close to the end of the Talos here. All right, everyone. Well, here we are back with you again. I've got my uh, corrosion green color mixed up here. I just kind of mixed some uh, blue and green together and a little bit of white and got my color close to where I like it. I dabbed a little spot here up on the top of his shoulder just to kind of test it out, and I like it. So we're going to start doing that. I've just got a simple uh, flat brush here. Um, one of my old brushes. I don't want this to be perfectly, you know, really nice. I just want it to look kind of sloppy. We're going to go around and just start highlighting, and I'm going to take my paper towel and, and tamp on it every time we do a little spot here and make it kind of blended in and look kind of smudged on there instead of, you know, hand painted on. So I'm going to start off on the top. Looks like he's got some action going on around here up on the top of his helmet. And uh, a little bit running down the side of the uh, crown there on the top. It's kind of thicker in some spots and it's kind of thinner in others, so we're just gonna try to simulate that. And then again, we're just gonna take our paper towel here and uh, just kind of tamp it on there, make it look kind of smudged. Then coming down here on his uh, on his eye, we get just a little right in this area right here and down onto his nose. up in here, some more on the sides of the helmet, and then kind of coming down his neck, Now, we're actually going to, what we're going to do here too is we've got this, this kind of basic color here and then you can see that there's a little bit of mixture in there too, a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take some white after I get done doing all this and just kind of dab a few spots here and there and that makes it, that'll make it look like it's, um, you know, changing tone just a little bit. Okay, we're going to keep on coming down on his arm here. They've got just a few traces of it going on down in here.
And that did that, that blended in nicely with that uh, with that purple that we did up on the top there. I'm glad we did that. Looks just like the, uh, the way it does on the shot I'm looking at here. Okay guys, I'm gonna call that part of it a done deal. I'm really happy with it. Let me get you up in here. You can see that uh, we've got them pretty well covered here. Got the highlights where I wanted them to. Maybe just kind of back in these little recessed areas if I missed a little bit. Around his feet a little bit more maybe. Just real simple. But uh, that's it. Now I'm going, whoops, sorry I dropped my microphone everyone. Sorry about that. I'm going to um, get my um, white now and I'm just going to come back with a tiny little brush, you know, a fine tip brush and just start kind of blending in a little bit here and there just to kind of change that tone up a little bit and uh, that should look pretty cool. All right, be right back with that and we'll call this guy a wrap then we can move on to the base. All right, everyone, we'll back with you once more for the wrap of the video here and I have Talos pretty much finished up now. As I talked about, I went back and took uh, that same green that I used for the, uh, for the corrosion effects on here, and I lightened it up about three or four shades, and then I kind of just highlighted around a few spots here and there on, on some of the highlights of this guy, and just kind of dragged it in there, and then I took a uh, paper towel, a little bit of water, and just kind of, you know, dragged it over it and kind of blended it together, and then I came back finally with a little bit of white on the very top and kind of did the same thing, just kind of dabbed it on here and there. And uh, we wanted the, the top half of the corrosion to look kind of a little bit more bleached than, you know, bleached out than the, than the bottom half, uh, as you would kind of see on a statue that's been out in the sun, you know, and all that. So uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I then, uh, after I finished doing all that, I went back and took a little bit of future uh, and on a wide flat brush, I just kind of tamped it down here and there on a few of the high spots, like up on his shoulders, his chest, on the back of his, uh, on the top of his back here. Uh, because you could see that on the on the studio model looking at my screen grabs. He's glossy in a few spots He's not overall glossy, but he's got a few highlights on him here and that are glossy I think they did that to try to make that you know Bronze highlights kind of show up a little bit more and kind of gleam a little bit and, and we got that effect going on here I'm just kind of turning them around here and showing you the, uh, the Detail on him. He looks really good. I will get you up a little bit closer to his face here and uh, you can see he's looking pretty much like Talos did in the movie. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, having, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm learning about all this weathering and everything as I go along. And I'm really happy. I think the colors are all pretty close and everything. And we did that little bit of purple up around the top that looks, you know, just like it did in the movie. So uh, really, really cool. I'm really happy with this. So we've got Talos um, just about done here. Well, pretty much done. So in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to work on the base. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to do the uh, realistic water effects on that. So I'm going to have to go on there and sand down the, uh, the water detail that's on the base so I get a little bit more depth to it. And then uh, we're going to, I went around and looked at some videos on YouTube about doing water effects to try to learn a little bit about it. And it looks like a lot of people are using clear silicone. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. They, uh, they all pretty, pretty much said that that's the easiest stuff to work with. And uh, so I'm going to go with some clear silicone. We'll tint it with some, uh, I'm going to go with a darkish greenish blue type, you know, color for the water. And then um, we'll uh, get all that blended in. We'll, you know, we'll be able to, we'll have to paint the Argo and put the mast on. And then we're going to have to come up with something for the oars and everything. So we'll work on all that in the next video and uh, paint the rocks and get the uh, nameplate on the front of it painted and everything. So we should be able to pretty much finish this up and maybe, maybe the next video, hopefully. But I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the work here today on uh, Talos. Like I said, I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks just like it. A sculptor who uh, did this casting did a really, really nice job on this and uh, really pleased with it. So I hope you enjoyed following along, everyone. We're going to call this one a wrap, and we'll see you in a couple days with uh, some more work and probably the finale on this one. So until we see you then, take care out there, everyone, and happy modeling.